Hello, this is John Spielman with a video version of my latest column, which should be coming out this Sunday, October the 18th. And I've entitled it for no, well, for an obvious reason, when three is greater than five. So um, I started by saying that um, during the Norway tournament, I've been streaming it, which is going to start in an hour again last round, as I speak. I streamed commentary a couple of times myself at my Twitch channel, but mainly I listened to the commentary between Vladimir Kramnik and Judith Polgar. And they're both very interesting, and Kramnik in particular has a really nice chess aesthetic. Uh, in his prime, I've said a powerhouse positional player with superb endgame, superb endgame technique. And originally I had allegedly a powerhouse positional player, because I think he's basically a magnificent hacker, which is a great compliment. He's a superb attacking player. He certainly started life much more tactically, and his instinct is to sacrifice for the initiative whenever possible, and he loves sacrifice in the exchange. And I said that um, in the time of Alpha Zero, this is a bit more validated than it was when things like Stockfish was somehow defending everything and pretending that no sacrifices work. So I was going to do some... Um, I'm just going to look, by the way, and check that we are recording. And we are very good. So now I'm going to go to here and I'm going to show you some things. So the first thing I'm going to show you actually is from the Norway tournament. And I said that this game, it's actually the last one in the database, Carson Tari, I was actually a bit upset when he won the game. So splendidly and viciously. So they got to this position and Carson played rookie eight, which just wins. The game actually went rookie eight. Check here, check. Bish g7 gets mated. Well, after that was knight f6, rook takes queen takes queen. Um, King h8, he played knight f6 and he resigned. So that was very splendid. And that was a nice way to finish the game. But I thought it was a bit sad, actually. I wanted him to play c4 to put the guy into an absolutely groaningly horrible zugzwang. Um, you go c4 first, basically just because you don't want to allow black to play c4. So you could try to go pawn takes pawn and have queen g4 check at some annoying moment. Well, it would be very annoying. It would be at least a draw if you get pawn takes pawn, pawn takes pawn, queen g4 check. And you get this position. If black does nothing, um, there are two things you can do. You can sit there. And then you just play pass. And black is gloriously in zugzwang in this position. Absolutely zugged up to the eyeballs. And for instance, I don't know. Fe4, Fe4, Rook F4 is the only way to actually avoid losing the house and the garden and everything else. And then you can just take, and he gives a check, and he's, no, he might as well just take and play Rook F8 and win a pawn ending. Didn't need to play Rook F8, but you might as well. I mean, the Rook A7 check is, I suppose, even stronger in terms of what computers might say. But then I, I did notice that in this position, I was thinking rook h7 check into there might be a problem. Because rook f6, you go queen c8, and you're threatening to go to a6 and start giving checks on a2, which is really a, a nuisance. But in fact, you have this very pretty move here. And then you really do need to go rook e8, and you trap the queen, which is rather pretty. Because of the knight fork, because of the skewer or pin on the seventh rank. Well. There's a knight fork after queen d7, and there's a pin after queen f7. So that was quite pretty. Anyway, Carson just won, as of course I would have done if I'd noticed that this was possible. Then I went on to some um, exchange sacrifices. And the first thing I did was I gave a few general rules about exchange sacrifices. So all things being equal, a rook is really worth more than a minor piece, or really is worth uh, more than a minor piece, but it needs open lines to operate effectively. You generally need, like to have a pawn for the exchange, but a strong piece and a really good square, especially a knight on a, on a strong point, or a lovely diagonal for a bishop, or a powerful pass pawn can be enough. As a general rule, in fact, almost all of the time, you need other pieces on the board for an exchange sacrifice to work. So sometimes they work in endings, even when you get a rook against a bishop, if the rook can't make a pass pawn. I didn't actually make that point in here. 
but for instance I got to this diagram here which you can probably see I think um, I'll stick it on the screen on here and I said sorry my mouse is playing up at this moment which is very very irritating indeed where's my mouse here's my mouse that's why I don't ever play bullet and I said this is completely lost for black but if you're playing um, with another pair of rooks it's really difficult and I gave a plan for white which is to put the king in e7 and the rook in f6 which okay, black can stop he has to weaken himself in some way if he does if you get that you then play f4 f5 g4 possibly exchange the h pawns you move your rook you play f6 check and then you arrange to take the pawn on f7 and you win by a lot of tempi so that's um, win, a way to win. Um, you have to be a little bit careful. The Black King doesn't get active, but it's never going to get active enough, really. Um, so that was um, faintly interesting. And, but with a pair of rooks each extra on the board, it would be much more difficult. Now, and then I started going to some examples. I said I asked my stream on Thursday, that's yesterday as we speak, um what examples they had and also there's a nice guy with i'm not sure his mum or his dad is scottish he's told me he's french um who um found me a couple of things he found me Rashevsky petrosin which i could have found myself of course because i knew about rookie six and he found a beautiful game lamy against smirnoff smirnoff but let's just go through quickly through these games these are annotated this is annotated by bok Vinnick. We'll turn it round. Um, well, Venick ended up in some sort of somewhat. I guess he should have taken d4, probably, shouldn't he? With a rather bad pawn structure. Not a very pretty position. Um, I played some moves. c4 played i don't know even if you should do that perhaps you should and they got to this position i don't i suppose that was attacking the f4 knight and here the guy played a weak move he played knight c3 which is a mistake because it allows black to sacrifice the exchange and keep a pair of rooks on the board after queen c2 he would have been clearly better because if bishop c7 you can take and play rook d1 and then rook d4 isn't really going to work with just a single pair of with, with no with no black rook on the board at the end i mean you can play it but it's probably not going to be very good what actually happened he went knight to there bishop to there queen to there and rook d4 which is sort of an archetypical exchange sacrifice because after he takes he decided to take with the knight maybe he should be trying to take with the bishop and then put a knight in d3 i don't know um black ends up pretty pass white ends up pretty passive and with black having a lot of space and a nice pawn structure rather than the horrible one and the guy didn't play particularly well i guess this is 43 so it's during the war of course in moscow um don't know if g4 is a very good idea but venix said he thought it Otherwise, black would just play, play for g4, but I'm not sure any of this, how true it all is. But definitely at some point, I think rookie one was better, probably. But then it got a huge advantage and splattered his way through. That's nice, you can just go bishop e8 and defend the g pawn. Teeing up to play g4 by now. Um, that's a pretty desperate move. Um, And the opposite bishop position is absolutely horrible for white because black's going to win the e-pawn move his rook up and then start pushing his connected past the pawns so this was a nice game by botvinnik um just took this he didn't, didn't try anything very clever and i think now he's got bishop b4 and h2 and pawn equals queen so a nice game by botvinnik with the nice exchange sacrifice rook d4 and actually, if we go back to the exchange sacrifice, it doesn't matter that much 
what the assessment is because if you don't play rook d4 then white's going to go knight a4 and attack the c pawn knight a4 and queen f2 and if you don't do something then eventually c5 is going to drop off and black is just going to lose so rookie rook d4 is a no-brainer if i ask the great engine itself then it is giving it's going rook d4 anyway with or, with or without an exchange of rooks but it does work out that rook d4 is a little bit better if you can see at the bottom of the screen right that's that game then there's Roshevsky petrosian this is a famous game we'll have black again um it's some sort of old-fashioned nimzo indian um it's from zurich 53 and I don't know if you really needed to take. I can see that if you go rook a8, maybe you're a bit worried about a4. But I, I absolutely don't know if you need to take. It seems a bit... I just thought rook f8 would be maybe better. Or maybe even rook a8 followed by f5. I don't know if that's possible. Maybe then you have a problem with some a4 and bishop a3 and taking them d5 or something. Um, but okay, he took... Be done and now white's threatening to smash through with e6 and to break the position up so this is a lovely move just stopping e6 blockading and preparing to put the knight in d5 you need to make room for the knight anyway you took the exchange back i suppose that's right but i mean i'd be a bit loath really to take the exchange back here if I could find any way just to keep those beautiful pieces. Maybe I'm misunderstanding the position. I mean, we took the exchange back. Uh, Ryshevsky, I believe, is short of time. It was annotated by Brunstein in his book on the 53 candidates. And I did have a glance at his annotations. So I, I found it on my shelf fairly easily. But I didn't take too much notice. The interesting thing is the exchange sacrifice. Which again is pretty much a no-brainer. Uh, Bronstein thought that Petrosin might be slightly better here, but um, okay, they agreed to draw in this position. Um, I don't know if you have rook a6. Do you have queen checks and queen checks and queen b2? I suppose. I mean, the knight is fantastic on d5, but Petrosin decided uh, over the adjournment that he wasn't to play for a win okay that's that one then we've got kasparov short um this is another one with a white square exchange sacrifice this was a match played in a discotheque near to leicester square in the center of london i mean obviously it wasn't discotheque at the time but they were on this stage in the middle of the disco and i watched it live and it's rather a fine game by nigel 25 minute game where he really discombobbed Kasparov, discombobulated him, which is rather impressive in some ways. I don't think you can take on b7 at the moment. It doesn't. I'm not really interested in the game as such. I'm interested in exchange sacrifices. Kasparov obviously was trying to win this stage. A lot of flapping around has occurred. Um, and I don't know. And here, of course, you just... You can play rotates rook according to the engine, actually, but you don't want to, because you've got such a beautiful square if white takes the rook. Here he decided he wanted to prepare knight c6. And d5 is also interesting. And now Kasparov played d5. Which makes sense. If you don't, then the knight's going to land on d5. And it's going to be huge. And you actually need some squares. Um, 
That apparently is a draw, is it? Maybe. Seems to be the, what the annotation is saying. And this is a beautiful start of a beautiful king march. Of course, there's the famous game short against Timon, in which Nigel moved his king to h6 as white, to checkmate on g7 with the queen. That's a mistake. Apparently, rook e8 just about is all right because you can't go king h5. Uh, so you can't go bishop c6 because of h5 and queen g7, and it's and it's uh, white who mates first. Mate next move. So bishop c1 is a mistake. Now the king gets out. That's really hairy. And White's position is completely disintegrated. The Black King is totally safe on h5. Normally king marches in the middle game are possible with opposite coloured bishops because, I mean, you know, sometimes you have to run anyway. But when you've got opposite coloured bishops, you have a whole complex that you're reasonably happy with on a good day. And that, excuse me, I was taking my sandals off. I was wearing sandals today, which is rather splendid. So that was that one. Then we've got Ivan Shuk Kramnik, which is, this was annotated by Fatachnik and Haz V. And I remember there was a beautiful game and I um, looked for it. And since I was talking about Kramnik to start with. And some notable features of this, perhaps the most notable, um, of course Kramnik was very well prepared. This was a novelty I think at the time. Um, hey, you've really got to assume things like that takes b5 don't work. Um, and so what's the exchange up, but black has a really good position. Um, g3 was played. Interesting, Patachnik gave queen f3, bishop b7, queen g3 plus equals. And interestingly, when I stuck this in an engine, it just said splat, basically said this is a terrible position for white doesn't believe any rook takes d5 nonsense apparently and if you're going to take on g7 there's going to be queen f4 check and bishop f6 which is going to drive so one line is going to go queen takes pawn queen checks king b1 bishop f6 i just yeah um and if i just noticed Sorry, if we go to this line. God, this mouse is being a bad tempered bugger, isn't it? What's going on with my mouse? My mouse is fighting me. Sorry, I'm just going to find my mouse. I don't know what is going on here. Sorry about this, people. Um, this is an absolute joy, obviously, uh, as we're doing this. Um, excuse me. I lost my mouse completely. Uh, no, I haven't. I don't know what is going on. Why it's playing up so much. No, 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 it's okay. Okay. Great mice of our time. Um, we're on this, this one. And in this position, after this, if check, what I was going to say is that if bishop f7 check, king e7, queen g3. He just had to see King E7. That was all. Um, I'll put, give the bishop D takes D7 the check. Dubious. That doesn't help. Doesn't help quite at all. Okay. So um, Kramnik got his pieces out. F5 is a lovely move. And now he didn't take the rook. This was really nice. He did, probably hardly even considered it. He just thought my position's far too good to do that. Play bishop f6, taking aim at the king. Bishop d3, knight a4. And this is a catastrophe for white on the, the dark square. It's really horrible. Bishop d5 to its clams. I don't know why that's... Uh, very pretty isn't it 
So he's not taken exchange, and now he does <coughs> some awful things. Of course, he didn't play pawn takes because of rook takes d5, I think. Very nice attack and game by Kravnik. And I think he... Yeah, fish b6, check and mate. King a2, check here. Knight d5. King a2, queen a4, mate was threatened. And mate follows. Very nice game. Um, that was that one. And then we've got the Erwin Lamy game, which is lovely actually. I mean, it's not a game I've seen before. I'm just going to enjoy it basically. I'm not going to uh, do very much more than that. Um, I guess I don't know if I could have played c5 now. This nice move, rook a6, gets a bind on the queen side. And, okay, there's nothing very much you can do about this. I don't know if there was some way maybe to play a5 or something. I suppose you take as a knight. And surely black should play e5 here to get some space. I understand it weakens the d5 score. I understand white can play f4. But, I mean, then at least you get a little bit... You've got some space, at least for the moment. And if, if white starts attacking you, then... He's at least opening some lines, which might help. Um, I don't know what this is. That doesn't look like a great move to me. Um, I don't know if you can go... Presumably not a5 because of knight takes knight. Pawn takes pawn, knight d4 or something. Rook takes pawn takes. Knight takes bishop and a5, then you go c5. Okay. I don't like it that he's allowed the king to c4. This looks like it's got worse to me. If you play rook takes, you can go knight f3 and here, and then knight d4 is going to destroy black completely. So they can't do that. And the nice thing about this game is that here you play rook d6, which is a move once you've decided you can play it, it's just almost irresistible. It would be, I would find it incredibly hard not to play that move. And um, I don't know if he needs to take it, but if he doesn't, presumably White just plays Knight d4 anyway. And now he just splattered him with the two exchanges down because he has, I don't know if he could try to have defended his b5 pawn, but presumably Knight to f3 to e5 is going to cause more or less total destruction. I wondered if he could take this, but it's not really very... I was going to try to stop him from advancing, but I think very soon we're going to have a Zugzwang. This is Zugzwang, I think. Total Zugzwang because you can't go Rook A7 because of B5, I suppose. And then King takes... that certainly isn't possible can't get king c6 because of king c4 and you can't move the rook anywhere else either because of or to b8 or b5 because of d7 so that would be I mean you start thinking can black go sort of e5 pawn takes pawn g5 or something but just look at it you can have about 12 pawns for a bit for a, the exchange at that point so that was very nice um so those were these games the exchange where with exchange sacrifices course they don't always work but they often do as I said the most important thing is to keep some major pieces generally on the board and if you are down in an ending as long as you've got a bishop and a rook against two rooks or a knight and a rook against two rooks you can often fight if it gets to a rook against a knight or a rook against a bishop then a rook's just a better piece okay I'm going to stop then hope you've enjoyed this and see you in a fortnight